I'm joined now by Trendon Watford, who just finished his freshman year at LSU. He had a phenomenal season, averaging over 13 points a game. He helped LSU to a second straight 20-win season and a second-place finish in the SEC. Trendon, how you doing? I'm doing good, y'all. How you doing? I'm good. It's good to good to speak to you. I think the last time we talked was uh, in Tuscaloosa in, I guess, yep. mid-February. Uh, so it's good to see you again and uh, you f just finish your freshman year. Um, tell me a little bit about you know, where you are right now and, and what's going on. Uh, right now, I'm just in Baton Rouge. Just, um, you know, everything's pretty much the same for me. I'll get a, I'll do a, you know, a workout at home and then eventually, probably later on in the day, I'll just go run and you know, just try, to, just try to keep myself in the best shape and then, you know, just the rest of the business sitting around video games. So. Yeah. Have you been able to – I mean, with school's just about over now, I'm sure, um, and things look pretty similar from Birmingham to Tuscaloosa to Baton Rouge, really all across the SEC. Uh, have you been able to get in a gym at all, or are you just in those in-home workouts? Just um, on, on, on and off. Uh, like, some days, some days I'll be able to get in the gym and then – you know, the next days I won't. Like, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty inconsistent. But, you know, just sometimes whenever I try to get in, I just, I just try to get, you know, the good amount of work in that I can. So, Yeah, absolutely. I talked to Britton Johnson, and he said it's, you know, for him, they're doing physical stuff and strength stuff. But for the most part, it's like he's in, you know, elementary school, junior high again, and they're playing, you know, he's yeah. doing stuff in the backyard and the driveway, getting yeah. shots up with his dad and stuff like that. So it's different. Uh, but go ahead and jumping into things here, Trendon. You are an uncle now. Uh, Christian and Morgan just had their first child. Tell me about your niece. My niece. Um, yeah, she was she was born um, two days ago on the twenty sixth, and you know I'll, today today is my brother's birthday, so you know it's gonna be a pretty exciting time around the, uh, around the house when I go visit him in a few minutes. But. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just new being an uncle, so you know, I just, you know, I'm just glad. Um, yeah, I'm just the uh, the ever expanding Watford family that's exciting. Um, so you know, congratulations and, and best wishes to Morgan and Christian in that. Uh, in your in your spare time, have you been able to watch the Jordan documentary on all all four episodes that have come out so far? Yeah, I've actually watched. I've actually watched all eight of them. Um, okay. Some more, some more of them got leaked on the internet, and I just went ahead and during the quarantine, I just went ahead and watched all of them because I really had nothing, nothing else to do. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty caught up on that. Well, tell me about your thoughts on it. Like, what do you think? You know, and because you and I didn't grow up watching Jordan. You know, we're we're Kobe, or early on it was Kobe and now LeBron um, transferring into Giannis and stuff like that. But what are your takeaways from when you see a guy like Jordan and how dominant he was? Um, so not just stats now, but we get to see the action and him talk about his career. What do you think in that? Oh, I think it's incredible. Um, you know, obviously, I during my during my generation, like you said, we were you know Kobe fans and you know just stuff like that. So just being able to see behind the scenes of you know what like you know what of what Michael Jordan actually did and how he you know how he held his team is accountable. You know that, that that's pretty much. That's pretty much the biggest thing that I call it. It's just how he holds his team, how he holds his team is accountable. It's, you know how he works hard. So. Yeah, I mean, definitely one of the hardest workers. I'm not going to ask you any more because you have seen more episodes than most of the rest of the world. So I don't want you to spoil anything for me or for anybody else. Uh, but I'm looking yeah, forward to the next couple, school. next couple weeks of episodes. It's been a yeah, great yeah. documentary. Uh, jumping into your freshman year. Um, you know, recently you declared for the draft. So tell me about that draft process. What's it's like? What it's like being evaluated and the decision that went into declaring for the draft. Oh, you know, I would just say the biggest. Thing, I was just, you know, just talking to Oprah with my family, and um, you know, I was, I knew, you know, I had was one of the top freshmen in the in the, in the SEC. So you know, I knew I had a pretty good year, and um, you know, I haven't signed anything yet. I haven't signed with anybody yet. So. You know, the biggest thing is just get feedback and, uh, you know, just testing the waters and just seeing, you know, where, where you know, where I could possibly go and, you know, in that range. So, I would say, you yeah. know, that was the biggest thing. Absolutely. And and what is it like for you? I mean, something that, you know, you've told me ever since we met your freshman year, like it's a dream for you to play in the NBA, to now be in that moment and to get the feedback from the scouts, um, possibly this dream for you of being fulfilled. What's that like? 
Oh, it was great. You know, just just being able to see all the hard work, you know, all the hard work that I put in, you know, it just paid off, paid off, paid off this year in the SEC. Just, you know, it's tough playing in the SEC, you know, being a freshman. So, you know, I would say, you know, it's you know, it's a great feeling because you just, you know, you're in a you're in a spot that a lot of people aren't in. So, you know, I would just say that's a, you know, that's an incredible feeling. Yeah, Trenton, this year you remember the 2020 All SEC freshman team. You averaged 13.6 points a game and a team best 7.2 rebounds a game. Uh, in conference play, you averaged over eight rebounds a game. But tell me about your freshman campaign and what that was like for you. I mean, what did you learn about yourself uh, in the college game? Oh, uh, you know, starting off, starting off, it was definitely it was, it was a tough road. Uh, you know, it's just a tough road. You know, just being a just just getting just getting used to the the physicality and the speed of the game. You know, that that that's really the biggest thing that's different from high school. Just the speed of it, the physicality of it. So. You know, I was, it was new to me, and um, you know, it took me it took me a few games to really catch on to it. And you know, eventually, when I kept when I when I caught on, I just felt real comfortable. And um, you know, every game is a tough game in the SEC, so you know, you got to bring bring your best game and just go out there and just um, you know, just just play just play how you play. Yeah, physically, I mean, you had to do a lot of growth. What's it like going against some of the best talent in college basketball? Going against some of the best coaches, but also learning from the likes of Will Wade, like. What was that adjustment for you like? Oh, it was a big adjustment. Um, you know, when you, you know, instead of high school, you, you know, this what's different. You're playing against scout reports, and you know, you might play a team twice. So, you know, that, that's you know that that's that's pretty hard. That's pretty hard to do. And you know, I would just say like, you know, just playing all all sorts of different coaches. You know, it, it's just pretty surreal when you come from when you come from high school. You know, you, now you're playing Calipari one night. And, you know, the next night you might be playing at Ole Miss, and you know, so it's just it's just pretty. It's just, that's just pretty crazy. The relationships you reformed, uh, you formed in the recruiting trail uh, with guys like Coach Calipari. I remember your sophomore year, my senior year, he came in the spring <laughs> and visited. Uh, but other coaches, I mean, most of them in the SEC recruited you. You grew up going to camps and, and summer ball and travel ball with thing, uh, players all across the SEC. What are those relationships like in playing against those guys week in, week out? Oh, it's, it's a good relationship. Uh, you know, I have, I, have a, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of close relationship with a lot of coaches in the SEC. Like you said, a lot of them recruiting me. So, you know, it's obvious. It's, it's, you know, it's a great relationship between us and um, – you know, between different coaches. So I would just say that's it. Yeah, Trenton, I want to ask you about uh, one game in particular after the loss to Kentucky in mid-February. Coach Wade expressed his disappointment uh, in the team. And I called your dad, and, you know, and he said something like, you didn't go to LSU to get treated well, and you went you went to learn, and you went to get coached, and you went to get coached aggressively. You know, I, I was there firsthand. I saw Bucky get on to you. I saw Bucky get on to other guys. But what's it like for um, being in that program and really going to LSU and being able to get coached up by a guy like Will Wade? Because a lot of people see, you know, the butt chewings, and they say, well, that's too aggressive, and, you know, he shouldn't be talking to his players like that. But as a player, you want to go and get better and get coached. So what was that like for you? Coach, when you guys went down 15 late, that's as angry as we've seen you in a while. Were you upset with the effort of the team? or I would just keep making the same mistake. Same guy keeps making the same mistake over and over and over again. I guess, what are your options there? What can I don't you really have any options. If I had options, I'd be playing other guys. Um, you know, it was, it, 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 it was what I expected. You know, I was a coach. Coach Wade is a great coach. And, um, you know, I came here so he could push me. And I knew that. You know, I knew. I knew. That he would push me during tough times, you know. I knew I would make mistakes, and um, you know, he just wanted me to learn from it. That was the biggest thing, you know. He just wanted me to learn from from the mistakes I made, and um, you know, Coach Wade's a great coach. And, you know, that was that was that was nothing personal between us, or you know, that that was just typical coaching, and um, you know, it helped it helped me help me later on down the season. So, yeah, one thing that Bucky always said is you're a very coachable player. And you can't be coachable if you don't have thick skin. And that's not criticism, that's coaching. That's what a lot of people don't realize in the world <laughs> of sports. And so, you know, yeah. your ability to take that um, and build as a player and also to have that trust in a coach, I think, is really important. Uh, that's something I've seen from you in Mountain Brook that's transitioned to LSU. And um, I know when your dad and I talked about that, I was, you know, that was no bump in the road. That's just, that's just how it goes in SEC and for a guy like you trying to get to the NBA. Trendon, you had a lot of improvement from non-conference to conference play in terms of shooting from the free throw line. Now I joke with you, uh, when you came in your freshman year, gave you a hard time about your free throw shooting. Uh, obviously, you've grown from that. 
But yep. uh, in non-conference, you shot 57%, and you went to up to shooting 76% in conference play. Tell me about that improvement uh, and who helped you improve from the free throw line and how you were able to do it. Um, Coach Wade. Coach Wade helped me a lot. You know, after every practice, we'll shoot, you know, 25 free throws, and I have to, I have to go 22 out of 25. Before, you know, before I could leave. And, um, you know, eventually when you just start repping it, when you start repping it and, um, you know, like midway through the bit, like right after the conference play, when we came back from Christmas break, I changed my I changed my routine. And, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people call it the rock back, how I do it. And, um, you know, I would just say like that, that, that just helped me, that just helped my balance on my free throws a lot. You know, it, it, was, it was more mechanics for me. You know, I just had to more get a better balance and, um, yeah, that definitely, you know, just every day after practice doing that just definitely helped me. Yeah, absolutely. And free throws are the most important aspect, especially in conference play when you're – every win counts and every, you know, every minute, every point counts. Um, that's I just remember laughing that you came in freshman year at Mountain Brook, and I remember specifically uh, on which side of the gym we were, and I was giving you a hard time about free throws, and now here we are yeah. uh, as your name is in the draft process. But – uh, in high school, you're the, you were the guy. You're an unselfish teammate, and you go to LSU, and you're surrounded by like guys like Javante Smart, um, Skylar Mays. What was the biggest adjustment going from being the guy in Mountain Brook, but also being a selfless player, to going to playing with guys that were just, you know, incredibly talented, um, bigger, faster, stronger? What was that like? The just the adjustment you had to make. Oh, uh, it wasn't it wasn't that big of an adjustment. Um, you know, I'm. You know, I, I, don't, I don't, I'm not a selfish. I, I, I'm not a selfish player, so you know, it, it was easy for me to adapt to those guys. And, you know, just being just being in camps and you know all American games, just playing with other great guys. You know, it definitely helped me lead up to this point. So, you know, I would say, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that big of an adjustment. And, you know, I enjoyed playing with those guys every game. Yeah, Trenton, I want to take it back a year from now. Um, go going back a year. Uh, it was about this time when you were choosing between LSU, Alabama, Memphis, Indiana. I know Duke made a late run in February, but uh, walk us through the decision because Alabama had a coaching turnover. Memphis's roster was filling up fast. Tom Crean coached Christian, but he wasn't at Indiana anymore, obviously. Um, but walk us through the decision process and what, why was LSU the right pick for you? Um, you know, the decision process was definitely tough. Uh, you know, being from Alabama, you know, Coach Avery recruited me, you know, since I was in eighth grade and, you know, right before, you know, right before signing, right before signing, right before I was about to sign, you know, he ended up getting, you know, he ended up getting fired or whatever. So, um, you know, that was, that was, that was definitely a big turn in, the, in my recruitment. And, you know, um, I had took multiple visits to LSU. I had, you know, I got a strong relationship with Coach Bill Armstrong. So, you know, you know, that's definitely that's you know I definitely felt comfortable with that with that coaching staff the most. And um, you know, I knew a lot of guys like Devontae Smart, Emmett Williams, Darius Davis. I knew those guys before I came and um, you know, I would just say that that's that's the biggest thing that led up to my recruitment. Yeah, absolutely. I remember I met Coach Wade um about a year and a half ago when he came and recruited you. Uh I think it was an early January game at Mountain Brook, and then we were able to maintain a relationship when he recruited you in the final four. And uh, he actually spoke to me after, you know, before the game, before the LSU game in Tuscaloosa this year. We were talking uh, on Radio Row. Oh, yeah. And uh, he, he caught up with me, and then he kind of used me as a shield to walk in front of the student section. Um, it was probably 60 minutes before the game, but he was going back to the locker room, yeah. didn't want to hear it from the student section. <laughs> Walked back to the locker room together. But, um, yeah, he's always fun to talk to. Uh Trenton, yeah. in the coming weeks and months during this quarantine and coronavirus, what are ways – you talked about, you know, in-home workouts, some getting in the gym. What are the best ways you can improve as a player uh, from home and the limited access you get to the court? Um, you know, I was just saying, just, just trying to improve my body. You know, I was, I've been doing a lot of, you know, just at-home workouts, a lot of core work, a lot of, a lot of arm work. You know, you'd be surprised a lot of things you can do at home with no weight, so. You know, it's definitely, you know, I would definitely say that. And just trying to stay in shape, you know, you don't have a gym. Just trying to get outside and run, right? And just trying to, you know, just trying to stay in some, you know, some form of shape so you get, um, you know, when, when this whole quarantine thing clears up, you know, you can be ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. It's really important to get your body right as Christian uh, or any of your 
NBA connections that you have and relationships you have with those players? Have they kind of given you a idea of what it's like to go through this process and how to get your body right, how to get your mind right, who to talk to and things like that? Oh, yeah, I've definitely talked to people, um, you know, firsthand, my brother, because, you know, he's went through it. So, you know, just he knows everything about the draft process. You know, he knows you got, you got to be in shape for it. A lot of these workouts, you know, they, you know, obviously they're tough and, you know, you got good players in there. So you just want to be in shape and um, just stay sharp with them again. Absolutely. Well, Trendon, uh, Coach Bucky just recently took the job at Samford. I know you were excited about it. I was excited about it. Got to do a lot of interviews with him, some stories for Samford. But what is your message uh, to the basketball community in Birmingham and the state of Alabama in what Samford is getting in Coach McMillan and kind of just explain your excitement for him getting that job, that D1 job? Uh, you know, my message is, you know, y'all are – Y'all are definitely getting a great, a great person and a great coach. Um, you know, I know firsthand he, you know, he pushed me and helped me tremendously throughout my four years. So, you know, I know he's gonna go to Sanford and do great things and you know just turn, you know, just turn the program around. You know, he's obviously, you know, he's a, he, he's won almost every accolade as a high school coach. And uh, you know, I really think I really think he's gonna take the next the next step as far as you know being a when being a collegiate coach and you know just being you know just being a high you know, you know, just being a high major coach. And, you know, I think he's going to, I think he's going to do great things. Or so. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to see what he's going to do. This has been a sit down conversation with a member of the all SEC freshman team, Trendon Watford, who just finished his freshman year at LSU is now in the draft process. Watford started 30 games scoring in double figures, 25 times, including 13 of the last 14 games that LSU played. Trendon, thanks so much for your time. And it was good to catch up with you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Gotta appreciate you.